Hello and welcome to our Tila Health Onboarding Understanding the Technical Qualification. All information provided is correct as of March 2024 and may not reflect future changes to guidance documents. Please always review the most up to date guidance. This session today will give you an overview of the T-level structure. It will give you an overview of delivery timelines, guided learning hours, the role of DFE and IFATE, an overview of key documents such as key date schedule, schedules and a higher overview of content and synoptic assessment, as well as an exploration of placement, a touch on resources to support delivery and key contacts and support that is available throughout your delivery. So first of all, we'll begin with an overview of the T-Level. So T-Level's purpose is to be delivered in a holistic approach. Yes, there are summative assessment. However, T-Levels go beyond exams, progressing into vocational world with the relevant skills and experience. You will find that skills demonstration is an important part of the qualification, just as important as the knowledge. These skills are vocationally specific, but also academic and work ready. Students will not only have the three A-levels equivalency to take them to higher education, whether that's university or apprenticeship, but also the skills and experience needed to succeed. So the T-level qualification is composed of two elements. The technical qualification or TQ, which is developed by an awarding organisation such as NCFE and the industry placement, which falls under the remit of DFE. The TQ has two parts, the root core component, which is the focus of year one, and occupational and special, which is the focus of year two. The core component gives the students the knowledge base, which is then extended applied to a chosen occupational specialism. The occupational specialism is then split into two components. You have the support in a healthcare root core, which goes across all qualification so that's three performance outcomes so no matter which occupation specialism that you deliver with the students they must complete the support and healthcare root core and then the occupation specialism which is three performance outcomes linked to their specific os so for example adult nursing there are core skills the general competency framework math english and digital skills which are embedded and taught alongside all m um, elements the GCF are standard across all TQs and the core skills can overlap. For example, there can be uh, some root skills that you will see through many TQs, which highlights the um, importance in industry of these skills. So where does IFATE come in? So let's explore these IFATE, DFE and uh, NCFE in more de detail. So you have one stage where the TQ is completely confirmed completed. You have the placement which is confirmed completed and you have the certificate is then issued as a result of these two components being confirmed that has been completed by the student. So who's responsible for these different components? So the IFA is the one that issues the overall certification once DFE's confirmed placement completion and the award and organisation, and in this case, NCFE has confirmed the TQ completion. Another key component when delivering the T-level is to make sure that you're always delivering the most and using the most up-to-date specification. So you'll be able to find the updated specifications in the T-level qualification page. If you go to support materials tab, and then there'll be a drop down of mandatory qual, you will see the most updated specification. So you can see there are two component, two specifications at the moment, with this one here being the most up to date specification. So the qualification will go through annual reviews or amends, and therefore where needed, a newer version will be created as a result of this. Um, to ensure that you're always using the most up to date, please use as a live document where possible, even though I do know that you would love printing off everything as a former teacher myself. However, if you if you don't regularly check the, the versions on a yearly basis, you could be using an old version. You can tell the new, most recent version by the version number on the bottom left. So here are the proximate guided learning hours. So you have the health, 
year one core component, which is 517 hours. And then you can see for year two, the mix of the core and the OS can range between 570 and 590 guided learning hours. So you can note there are even higher guided learning hours for year two. This reflects the high level and complexity of the knowledge and skills to be delivered. Um, you should consider accommodating for this and your placement hours in your planning. So here's some suggested delivery timeline for the two years. Being aware of when the core assessments are in yellow and occupational specialisms in orange allows you for you to deliver the relevant content. The structure of delivery is entirely up to you. In the example, we have the first year focusing on the core content up until the core assessments and then starting the occupational specialism content with an opportunity to reset in year two here and here. And in this timeline, we have the industry placement running alongside, so long and thin. So, for example, one day a week. You can fit the industry placement in whenever suits you and your students, including school holidays, as long as the required hours are met. It is up to you to determine a schedule that suits you and your students. Before we go into more detail, we just want to clarify some common queries. So first of all, around, around resets. The exams are one unit and thus are taken and resat together. The mark for the exams and ESP are combined to give a grade for the core component. It is not possible to fail just one paper. It is also not possible to just reset one paper. The, the students can sit both the exams and the ESP separately. Um, and then as a result, the retake can be done independently. The highest mark always counts. Um, as of March 23, there has been some further updates. So over here on the left, we have a new grading matrix. This was done March 23. So those that first com students completed at the end of last year were using the most up to date matrix. So the health qualification is based on a 50 50 matrix. Um, this was the old grading matrix and this is the new grading matrix. And you can see there is an extra two opportunities for a merit, one at an E, one at a D for year one, and an op extra opportunity at a distinction. So a C for year one, a distinction for year two will then give a C, uh, distinction overall. The, the DFE also in March 23 confirmed the allocation of UCAS points for year one um, as, as as long as the industry placement has is completed. So what this mean is UCAS points was only previously awarded at the end of the two years upon the completion of the core assessment on the occupational specialism and the industry placement. However, should a student not have, should a student have completed the industry placement and the core, um, but did not set the occupational specialism whatever reason, there was no UCAS points available for the students. So as a result, based on this new model, should you have student A who, com who completes the core, completes the industry placement, but for whatever reason doesn't complete their year two O assessments, they would now get um, UCAS points awarded. So how does this, this work? So say you've got student um, who got uh, B at year one. So they are uh, worth 60 UCAS points on completion of the industry placement. They also set their occupational specialism assessments and they also they got um, a merit for the occupational specialism. So when you, what you would do is you would add the 60 UCAS points for uh, a merit here and to the 60 UCAS points for a merit here, so a B here and a merit here, and the students would come out with 120 UCAS points. This is a really good way for students to continually measure progress throughout the assessment series. So now we're going to look at some really key documentation, uh, which are really important documents that give more than the name may suggest. For example, the key date schedule. So the KDS or key date schedule is a document refreshed annually containing all significant calendar dates in relation to every T-level qualification delivered by NCFE. It is published on or on around the 1st of July each year and contains information relevant to the next two years worth of delivery. So, for example, in 
July 24. The content will cover all silly information for 24, 25 and 25, 26 academic sessions. The KDS is structured such that common dates agreed either across award and IG awarding organisations or AOs if common to all T-level qualification or across NCFE delivered subjects if only common to all NCFE T-level qualification. And it takes the following design. So it moves from section one through to section five. So please review all these sections in detail because they have some really important components that will help support you in your delivery. Um, so what are the processes and timeline of KDA production and how can you be part of this? So the first draft of KDA is created in early January. So cross award and organisation meetings take place in February and March to agree on common dates and to avoid T-level assessment date clashes. First draft finalised in late March. Provider consultation takes place in April, May and final draft is created in late May. Published versions along with consultation and narrative response um, document will be, be on and around the 1st of July. So provider consultations, what, is, what are those? As agreed at the prior across AO meetings, following the creation of the draft version of the KDS, around late April, early May, a period of consultation takes place with providers, lasting two to three weeks, during which providers can offer feedback and comment on the content of the draft version of the document. Where assessments are scheduled for the first time during this consultation period, NCFE may decide that a targeted follow-up consultation focusing solely on these assessments will take place on or around late May, early June, so that providers can submit immediate feedback on their experiences of delivery of these assessments. Following these consultation periods, key internal stakeholders will determine if any adjustments are required in relation to comments received and will publish responses to themes identified providers with rationale for why revision did or did not take place within a comments and outcomes document published at the same time as the final KDS itself. So what are the underpinning factors that, that influences the KDF production? So before construction of the KDS takes place each year, a KDS focus group comprising members from key internal stakeholder teams is created with the express intention of contributing and advising on the development of the KDS. When deciding upon the dates for any individual assessments, the focus group will consider subject combinations using statistical data from previous series and feedback from providers. The KDS will take note of the timetabling arrangements for FSMQs, GCA and GCSE qualifications in order to reduce potential timetable clashes. However, it should be noted that equivalent common GCQ timetable is only published annually, one year in advance, therefore may Many key GCSE and A-level dates are only confirmed after publication of the KDS. The focus group will try to minimise timetable clashes and accommodation problems for providers. However, given the size and complexity of this document, clashes will be inevitable. Where a provider is impacted by a clash, we ask that they submit an assessment variation request via our website. Assessments will be scheduled during standard term times and cannot take account of individual school or college closures. We will not schedule any assessments for a weekend or a bank holiday. Ac academic sessions for all set and timed external assessments will be timetabled for 9am if a morning slot or 1pm if an afternoon slot. The focus group will take account religious festivals. However, there may be occasions where we are unable to avoid timetabling assessments on such days. Please note, it must not be assumed that an individual subject or assessment component will be timetabled on the basis of historical arrangements. All dates provided within provisional copies of the KDS are not confirmed until they are finalised and published in the revised updated version available to providers in July. Printed versions of the KDS are not subject to version control, so providers must refer to our website for the most up-to-date version. For some qualifications and their associated components, assessment materials are key information will be provided in advance of the assessment itself. Historically, this has been referred to as pre-release. However, formal pre-release documentation 
adaptation as defined within any qualifications associated assessment strategy has not traditionally included information such as technological configurations and assessment room setup, thus leading to confusion and frustration for providers. As a result of this, for 23-24 on, NCFE have renamed the associated section with the KDVS as Advanced Assessment Material, which will now incorporate all or any information or documentation sent to or required by providers before the release of the papers themselves. Additionally, this section will indicate whether and when this information materials are to be shared with provider staff and students. Some key documents around assessment regulations and where you can find them. So on NCFE website, you would pop to qualifications, which would be step one. This would drop down to step two, which to assessment support. This will then extend over. And if you look at the bottom here, step three would be to click on assessment regulations, external assessment timetables and guides. In here, you will find your key documentation for assessment regulations, such as the qualification specific instructions for delivery or QCID and the regulations for the conduct of external assessments. Please review these documents as they have really important information to support your delivery of the T-level qualification. So now let's have a look at an overview of the contents and synoptic assignments beginning with year one. So year one is focused on health from a general knowledge and skills point of view rather than occupationally speci specialism focus, which is the focus of year two. In regards to the core skills and the GCF, when planning your delivery, as mentioned earlier, these can be explicitly or implicitly part of your curriculum design. Finally, as the qualification is aimed to be delivered non-linear and there are no continuous summative or unit based assessment, just endpoint assessment, there is a real opportunity for continuous formative assessment of both skills and knowledge. The specification identifies the depth and breadth that is needed. In this example from the health A2.11 is the overall criteria. This is the overall criteria and the bullet points is the depth of the content that they need to cover. So as part of this criteria, they need to cover job description, person specification, and these are the depth that you would need to go to in order to deliver that content. So these sub bullet points. You are required to deliver all content areas in class. Remember the placement is separate from TQ and that's not to say that you can't consolidate the core skills and knowledge in placement. Um, which we'll explore later on um, or have students discuss in class how they've conducted these skills and placement. As mentioned earlier, it does not require a linear approach and you could theme the specification. These examples here are from the spec and have how you can theme the content and they follow the four sections of paper a paper. So as you can see, you've basically got four units here. If you think of the old language, which could be, these are the theme names and these are the combined content areas from content A. So it's a really nice way to sort of teach that non-linear approach. So we're not focusing on assessment to do, but we will, um, sh we will share a sort of high overview of how the assessments are structured. So year one is made up of the written exams and ESP. Each exam paper is broken into uh, four sections. So paper A is broken into four sections, sections A to D, and paper B is um, broken into three sections, A to C, and both papers each last two hours, 30 minutes. As I mentioned earlier, you cannot fail a paper and pass another. The two papers are combined for one score. This means if a student is weaker on one paper, the combination score could help support this. Uh, a common misconception is that ESP is completed on placement. However, this is not the case. Employers were consulted when creating the ESP to ensure vocational and work ready students. It is externally set, marked and moderated. All components of the core, core assessments are externally set and marked. Therefore, no need for assessment standardization or IV processes for the core assessments. The obsessive assessment objects for the exams are AO1 to AO3. As you can see, that around about 65 to 70% of the marks come from AO1 and AO2. 
which helps support, which could help support those students that may struggle with the AO3 exam style questions. With the ESP, there are five out assessment outcomes for the ESP. AO2 focuses on the pathway core skills and core knowledge. And this is 56% um, weighting of the overall score for the assessment, highlighting the importance of the application of both core knowledge and core skills. AO4 looks at the effective use of the general competency framework in the assessment, with AO5 really focusing on the evaluative and reflective skills. These are the six core skills. So as I mentioned earlier, you've got those really key component core skills which are relevant both for the vocational specificity of a health TQ, but also general work um, skills. So you've got your person-centered care, which are very health specific, but then you have communicate and researching, which are really important for many areas um, in the vocational world. These are the key tasks that the students are assessed on throughout that then are assessed against these core skills. Please explore the guidance documents for more detail on these. Key strategies for developing core skills are using performance throughout the year through practice so that students see them as norm. Desensitize your students through continual audio and visual recordings. Use the performance in all pathway to increase reflective skills. Continual presentations through digital presentations so that students are able to effectively and efficiently create uh, presentations for both in assessments and to enhance digital literacy. As mentioned earlier, the specification contains the general competence framework. This lists all the English, maths and digital skills T-level students are expected to develop and are assessed against alongside their studies. Now let's explore an overview of the year two content and synoptic assessments. Year two is when students choose their occupational student uh, specialisms. All students do one with the exception being non-dentistry uh, non health students. Providers can choose which occupational specialisms to offer. This is based on staffing and resources. However, it is important to ensure that the students are not missing out on studying the area they wish to due to limitations at the provider. Therefore, it is important that you communicate the occupation special that you will offer to your students during marketing and induction so they can make the choice that is right for them. The specification details staffing requirements for the core content and the occupational specialism. The specification for the occupation specialism is structured differently than for the core content. Each occupational specialism has three performance outcomes. And then you have the core out, um, support and healthcare core, as mentioned earlier, which has also three performance outcomes. So that is six performance outcomes for the T-level health. Under each performance outcome, there will be a list of knowledge and skills. The knowledge statements show what the students need to know and the skills, what they need to do. So let's have a little look at this example from the healthcare core. So you've got the performance outcome one, assisting with individuals overall care needs. In the, this outcome, there will be several key sort of areas or themes. So in the, in the grey box, which is working in a person centred way in this example. And then knowledge and skills will then fall under this theme. So knowledge and skills that will link to students understanding and knowledge and demonstration of working in a person centred way, which will then assist with an individual's overall care needs to ensure comfort and well-being. That's how that links. So the knowledge goes down on the left and the skills go down on the right. These are linearly. So what will happen is all the knowledge under this area will be numbered this way from K11 on onwards and then same with the S. Therefore, these two areas side by side may not necessarily match. However, you will find this naturally occurring in the specification. So really explore what skills may match knowledge here on the side so that you can do a combination of knowledge and skills lessons, really getting the students to apply that knowledge in a demonstrative way. Again, delivery does not need to be linear. They're not assessed against performance outcomes. So really explore how you can theme this specification, linking knowledge and skills, and it really helps reduce duplication and more um, application and retrieval. 
So these are the occupational specialists as mentioned earlier. The assessments allow students to demonstrate a holistic understanding of the sector. The understanding of connections between topics are covered across performance outcomes, as mentioned earlier, and really exploring how to integrate and apply knowledge and skills with breadth and depth. Now, the, the assessments are designed to be synoptic in a way that is occupational realistic as possible. However, this is a fine balance to ensure an occupational currency, but also ensure an assessment criteria integrity. Um, so this is a fine balance between the two. Assignments might be broken down into separate tasks and specific conditions, for example, supervised assessment window exam conditions will also apply. So make sure you explore the provider guidance in relation to the OS assessments. So this is the overview of the synoptic tasks. And, th th and from here, you can really see the scope of these individual assignments. Um, there are key skills that you should develop in your students to support them with preparation for the synoptic assignments. And you can use the sample assessments and previous live assessments from the NCFA qualification page to support this. The assignments are really explore problem solving and critical understanding in your students. Um, the marking for synoptic assignment varies depending on the assessment. They are either internal or external. So in this case here, assignment two, part one and two are internally marked. All assessments are externally moderated. There are specific requirements such as standardization training, um, for example, um, which you must undergo to ensure um, the assignment to part one and two internal marking. So please review all guidance documents on this to make sure that you are aware of what you need to do. So that was the overview of year one and year two of core assessment. So please feel free to re explore our YouTube channel, which I will highlight in a bit, uh, to really delve into these criteria in further detail. Now, as I mentioned earlier, placement is not managed by the NCFE, but by DFE. But let's have a look at an overview of this and also look at where you can find some key documents to support and how you can bring this to life in the classroom. So the placement is managed by DFE. There are no assessment on placement for the T-level health qualification bar dentistry. There are 315 hours to a maximum of two employers. It must be completed with an external organisation and it can be completed outside of term time as long as you're ensuring the health and safety of that student through, through those holidays, for example. There are DFE really useful guidance and documents which are available on the DFE web page, um, which really explores this in more details. When you schedule the placement, as mentioned earlier, is up to you. However, feedback from our current providers is that they find it beneficial to conduct some of the placement earlier in year one. This helped contextualise the core content for the students and assisted with the ESP. They also found a marked difference in the maturity, confidence and ownership of learning for their students after they had gone, uh, gone out on placement. So just like the UCAS points in the grading matrix, DFE also had updates in March 23 regarding placements. They introduced um, more delivery approaches to their qualification. So you can find more details of these in the guidance, but for example, skills help and employer training centres, um, work taster activities, T-level pathway placement, small team projects. These are all key areas where the students can make those hours up as long as it doesn't meet as long as it meets the requirement of no more than two employers. So what can this look like? So on the T level uh, DFE placement guidance page, you will find a document here called Annex A. And it gives a summary of the approaches, but it also gives a matrix. So how do you read this matrix? So having a look at health, the students can do up to 35 hours of work taster. They can do all their placements on T-level pathway or part-time work. Um, they can have up to two, um, they can have up to two employers. Um, and they can also do a small team project or a skills hub. 
Yeah, so you can't do both, which is up to one third. So there's a real combination here. A student could get 35 hours from Work Taster, um, a small team project, which was also delivered by their T-level pathway placement. Um, so that was 100 hours there, so that's 135. And then they also had some part-time work, which was the, with their second, that would be their second employer. So that would be, um, which would then split the last sort of 200 hours between those two. That means there's no more than two employers and the students are getting a diverse range of way of experiencing those placement hours. So explore this placement in more, this matrix in more detail and see what works best for you and your students. The responsibility of securing and monitoring these industry placement is on you and this is outside of NCFE's remit. So please follow the, the government guidance as highlighted here on page 41 of the placement delivery guidance. Here are the completion criteria for the DFE guidance. So again, that is on that DFE industry guidance document. So please explore these in more detail. The DFE have also created a placement booklet template. Um, so please explore these. It has learning out, example learning outcomes uh, from a general health pathway point of view. However, you may want to make these more occupational specific. So for example, here, you've got a health, an OS specific criteria being added. So we've explored K3.1 to K3.4 and linked that with the skills of S3.16 to S3.18 because these sort of link in the knowledge and demonstration side. Getting the students to show that they've understood it or observed it, discussed, took part, a sort of checklist and then a commentary related to that. So what did they learn in relation to these areas? So this might allow your placement booklet to be more occupationally specific and show the, and, and allow those learning outcomes to be demonstrated more specifically. And then these can be then used and discussed regularly in class so the students can share best practice and experiences. So this is just an example of how you could expand on this. So what resources are available to support you in delivery? So the NCFE have a range of um, support available for you. So you have schemes of work which are completely free for both years. There are essential resources which are free for year one and year two, as well as paid additional resources which are aimed at those hard to to teach areas. So when you're looking at the teaching material tab on the NCFE page, just make sure that you're aware that it is alphabetical. So you'll have like the scheme of work at the top and then it'll be all the additional resources that will come first because it has additional first, which is the paid. If you scroll past that, you will then get all the essential resources after that. So those are those free resources. So this is an example here of a scheme of work. Um, this one does come from um, the uh, science food technology one, just as an example, but it gives you an idea of, um, of what you can get. So this is a scheme of work, which, may, which will give some example resources that you could create. So the resources here are example of what you could create um, and some Q&As. There also are um, lesson plans, again, giving examples of resources that you could use in relation to the content. There are interactive activity sheets, home study and extension activities, which can be used in any way that supports your delivery. So the textbook that is hell of uh, that is available. So there is a second edition which was published on the 29th of March. This was to take into account the updated specification very specifically more so around paper B. And then on the 30th of August, Hodder have highlighted that they will also deliver their very first exam practice workbook and their first um, occupational specialism textbook, which is for supporting the adult nursing team in this. There are also ESP and exam student packs available in the support materials on the qualification page. I'm also very excited to announce the development for education. NCFE and Gatsby technical education projects are joining forces to support T-level teaching and learning. The collaboration between the two educational charities will provide free teaching materials for educators who teach T-levels, including 
digital health and science. So as I say, it's only um, this partnership is only new beginning sort of second week of March that this began. Um, already we have topics on for health and science and you can explore these topics on the Health and Science Technical Education Network page by clicking on the Health and Science green box at the top and then you'll get a tutor guide and then what will then be further down is content areas with specific slide decks, worksheets, vi worksheets videos, uh, plenary tasks. There is a plethora of free resources for you to use throughout your teaching. You will also continue to get support from NCFE, so from myself. Um, I mentioned earlier that I have a YouTube channel available, so please find the Health and Science T-Levels Training Support and CPD playlist. There are now almost 80 videos on there, um, which covers for all three TQs, the Health and Science Technical Qualification. And you can explore a range of contents from preparing for assessment, preparing for delivery to more C CPD focused areas such as academic skills, differentiation and the T-level. We also have the T-level Provider Hub, which is um, beginning to grow. There is more and more getting added to that. Key links to documents will be going there. And over the next year, this will expand and grow for being a resource place. So we'll look to maybe putting our on-demand videos that are on the YouTube onto this hub so that you have one place to get support. There are support from your account execs and then there's support from me on curriculum consultations, which is that one to one um, support virtually, which supports on delivering um, and teaching and learning. You also have a dedicated uh, customer support for T-level support at ncfe.org.uk. And this is this email here is very much around anything to do with queries that you have around assessments um, that sort of doesn't fall into sort of the teaching and delivery of the qualification. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, I, I hope you really this is to help expand your understanding of the T-level qualification. Um, thank you again and keep inspiring.